Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. It's almost Halloween, and there's a witch in outer space. That's right, you guessed it. It's the Witch Head Nebula, and we're gonna take a photograph of it. So join me in today's episode of Space, space Madness. In late October, just after midnight in the east, the constellation Orion climbs into the sky. And at the foot of Orion is the star Rigel. And there, hovering just above the star, is a cloud of gas and dust bathing in Rigel's light. And this cloud is the reflection nebula known as the Witch Head. <laughs> The Witch Head Nebula is best photographed between around 100 millimeters and 275 millimeters, depending on your camera's sensor size. So you don't really need a far reaching, super zoomed in telescope for this, but it is a very, very dim reflection nebula. So dim that you probably won't even be able to see it in your test shots at all. So it might be a good idea to use a lens or telescope with some fast optics, a low F ratio. <laughs> yeah, that fast. What I mean by fast lenses and telescopes is a lot of prime lenses, which are camera lenses that don't zoom, and telescopes, they have a low F ratio number, or what most photographers call aperture. Aperture is very different in astronomy. But that low F number lets in more light over a shorter period of time, and that's why we call them faster lenses. Cheaper zoom lenses tend to have higher F ratio numbers, therefore it takes you a good bit longer to let in light from very faint targets but that's never stopped us from using things like the 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens before, has it? And most definitely, because the Witch Head Nebula is so incredibly dim, we will need a tracking mount like a star tracker, like this Ioptron Skyguider Pro. You can also use the Skywatcher Star Adventurer or any kind of go-to mount. We just need a tracking mount that will move our camera with the rotation of the Earth so we can do very long exposures on the stars. The witch is faint and loves to hide in total darkness. You will not be able to find her in the lights of a city. You need to go out and find you a cabin in the middle of nowhere, but not a cabin in the woods, no. Trees are bad, and so is the light of a full moon, or any moon. You need to go out on a night where there is no moon and become one with the darkness. Light pollution filters such as the Optolong L Pro may help in a light polluted area, but narrow band filters such as the Optolong L Enhance and L Extreme will actually obscure the light of the witch's eerie glow even more. It is my ultimate goal to get a good witch head photograph by Halloween this year. I want to try to make it better than last year's, or at least a different take on it. Over the past weekend, I already had two attempts and they ended up being miserable failures. You're a failure. Come on guys, give me a break. It doesn't look too bad. Okay, it actually does look bad. So the big problem I was having was there was a big halo that caused a huge flare around the star Rigel. I tried taking my light pollution filter out and that did nothing. I tried framing the witch head to where Rigel wasn't even in the photograph, ended up having to do a lot of weird cropping and that looked very bad as well. I ended up looking at the data of the photographs I took of the witch head last year because I was wondering how the heck was I getting such better results a whole year ago. And what I found, I was using my Canon 6D as opposed to my T5i and I think maybe that had something to do with it but unfortunately my 6D was stolen by the post office. Whoever stole it, I hope they're out there having fun taking photographs. <laughs> Well, I only have two more days of clear skies before it's endless clouds going all the way up until Halloween. So this is my only shot. I really wanted to try it maybe with the 6D or a different camera other than the T5i. So I got on lens rentals and I ordered myself a 6D to use for about a week. According to UPS, it should be here anytime today and the clouds are gonna clear up around midnight and we're gonna give it a shot. One hour later. Well, the 6D Mark II did arrive from Lens Rentals. Unfortunately, I had some microphone problems, but all you're missing is there was a box, and inside the box there was a case, and inside the case there was a bag, and inside the bag there was a nice crisp 6D Mark II that I had to eventually go figure out how to use. 
All right, now that I've got that worked out, it's time to make a plan. And I think that plan is gonna to be to not only use the 6D Mark II, but also the Canon T5i. With the T5i, I'm gonna use the 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens. I'm gonna zoom it in to about 100 millimeters. I'm gonna use some electrical tape to tape that down at that focal length so it won't slip. I will then attach this camera to just a regular old star tracker. And that's what I'll be using to shoot a very wide field view of the Witch Head Nebula. For the 6D, I'm gonna attach my Radian 61 telescope to it. It's a telescope with a focal length of 275 millimeters. With the T5i, 275 millimeters was way too zoomed in. I could not get the field of view I wanted. The star Rigel was just way blown out and had a bad halo. But what I remember from last year was my old 60 had a perfect field of view with the Radian 61. So we're gonna try it with this. This has a full frame sensor, so it's not quite as zoomed in as the T5i. And I think it's gonna work perfect. And that setup should end up looking like this. I've got my ASI Air and all my power attachments already connected to it. So this is about ready to go. For the Star Tracker, I'm really gonna wanna maximize its potential because I wanna take as long of an exposure as possible. So I'm gonna attach the T5i to the Star Tracker in a little different way than I normally do. Typically for the T5i or just a light crop sensor camera and a kit lens, I would just take this attachment right here and screw a ball head onto it. And this just clips right on the front of my Star Tracker. And the camera would attach right here to this ball head and I could move it in any direction. But there's two things I don't like about this right now. A, once this attachment is on, I can no longer see through the polar scope, so I can't check my polar alignment throughout the setup and throughout the night. That's a bad thing. I want my polar alignment to be perfect. Second, I can't balance. There's no counterweight. And so I want to be able to balance my setup so it'll move with ease and not cause any problems and it'll be tracking very well. So I'll be using this instead. This piece came with my Star Tracker, along with this dovetail saddle that sits right on top. But this did not. This is an extension for the counterweight rod. The counterweight is actually much heavier than the camera and lens combined, and it's just too heavy to balance that really light setup. So what I did was remove the long counterweight rod and replace it with the shorter extension, and that took a little bit of weight off. So I'm gonna stick this on here. And on the bottom of the camera, I actually attached a small Vixen dovetail. Now I can slide it right here into the dovetail saddle and tighten it down. Now I have the ability to see through the polar scope all night and polar align whenever I want. We can see that it actually balances with the counterweight pushed all the way up. So it's still just barely balanced, but also have to balance in declination as well. Because once I point my camera over at Orion, as you can see, it's falling forward like that not balanced anymore that means the camera is front heavy and so I'll just loosen the dovetail saddle and pull the camera back tighten it let's point it towards where Orion's probably gonna be and now do you see this it's not falling in any direction it's very balanced now and this is such a light setup that I think with good polar alignment, I'm gonna be able to get some pretty long exposures of the Witch Head Nebula. All right, folks, let's get out your brooms and let's go catch us a witch. Okay, it's just after midnight. The crazy clouds and wind from earlier are finally gone, and Orion is rising beautifully off in that direction. I've managed to successfully polar align both mounts to the North Celestial Pole, so they'll be tracking my targets as accurately as possible. 
Now all that's left to do is point both my cameras up at the star Rigel, and we're going to get the witch head framed up and start shooting. Okay, here's a test shot on the back of the T5i. Uh, you can see Rigel's kind of in the middle there. Can't see any form of the Witch Head Nebula, but hopefully if I take enough pictures, it'll show up. So let's look at the camera settings. I'm using ISO 1600, F5.6 for my aperture. The shutter speed's in bulb mode, and I'm using an intervalometer, so it's hard to see this, this, this remote right here. And I've programmed it to do two minutes or 120 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell my intervalometer to take the same shot over and over again for uh, at least three to four hours. Now, before we start shooting with the 6D, I want you to notice that I've rotated it a full 90 degrees because I think this is gonna give me the framing I want with this field of view. And here's a test shot from the 6D on the EQ6R Pro mount. And if you look really close, you can't actually start to see the witch head in there. Let me show you the settings I use to get that. I'm using an ISO of 1600 and a shutter speed of 180 seconds. There's a little bit of light pollution from a street light out here, so I don't want to push it any more than that. From here, I'm just going to set my ASI Air to go ahead and take 80 to 100 of these frames. It was close to five o'clock in the morning when I went back outside and checked on everything and saw that the 6D had taken 66 successful photographs and the T5i had taken at least 100. I then put each rig back in its home position and put the lens caps back on. Once I was done with that, I took several more frames with the lens cap on with the exact same camera settings and exposure time to use as noise reduction frames, also known as dark frames. I stacked my lights and darks in a free stacking software called Deep Sky Stacker. For those of you who are curious, I did also take flat frames. And for those of you who don't know what flat frames are, they're just another form of calibration frames like the dark frames that I took that get rid of vignetting instead of noise. Flat frames can be a little difficult to explain briefly, so I'm gonna make an entire video just on calibration frames, so stay tuned for that. So how did it go? I'm very impressed with the 6D Mark II. It got rid of that uh, halo around Rigel that caused the flare and all that stuff, so I think I'm gonna have to get me one of those cameras. And I was actually very surprised with the T5i and the kit lens. It still had the halo and lens flare, but because the field of view was so much wider at around 100 millimeters, it didn't really hurt the photo too much. So I can't wait to show you. So that's gonna do it for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave me a like. It helps out the channel. And please subscribe for more content. I might even make a video on how I processed the Witch Head Nebula. All right, everybody, as always, stay spacey, clear skies. See you next time.